All right, guys, we need to get ready for a water change. For all you new reefers out there, I highly recommend getting a RODI filter system, so reverse osmosis and deionized resin bed filter if you don't have a convenient source of fresh salt water and RODI water um, because you will need it. Now, I, I know I've heard of reefers just say, you know, I just use my tap water and it's fine. That may be true for some, but uh, you never really know what's in your tap water. So it's super risky. Um, you don't know if the water source will change. If you have this filter system, you know you have the purest water you can get regardless of your supply, regardless of what your city or town does to your water system. So um, I purchased this probably almost 20 years ago. And I also use this to feed my refrigerator water. So I'll show you with this system real quick. I'm gonna pull it out and I'll show you how this is all set up. All right, you heard that right, guys. <laughs> we are actually gonna do a water change, or at least in this video, um, we'll prepare for a water change. Um, so I haven't done a water change on this tank for months now, at least a couple months, I think. I don't even remember when. Um, I hadn't planned on it, but I'll tell you why. Um, let me show you, actually. See that right there? That is, what is, what is that? You guys know that is the dreaded felonia aka bubble algae there's a bunch right there there is a bunch oh he can't see it oh right there you see that all the way down there that nice little bunch right there and there's a bunch right there so they're kind of scattered uh, about uh, but definitely need to get them out of the tank so um, we're gonna pick them out and vacuum them out of this tank. But while I'm at it, I thought I'd give you guys a quick update on the tank. It is doing awesome still, for the most part. Um, I mean, all the corals are looking great. Uh, at least all the acros still continuing to grow a little bit. Um, the hammer, toxic green hammer, is doing really well. Nice polyp extension and continuing to grow. Let's see. The forest fire digi there is nice and happy. But we do have some algae growing that we want to siphon out. There's some sort of hair algae there. But no sign of the dinos. Um, corals are doing well. Well, except for this guy. As you can see, there's algae growing on them. So I'm going to have to clean them out too. Once I clean them, it'll be fine. And show you guys the triplets are doing really well. Um, look at that guy's looking nice and happy. Those guys sort of merge together. <laughs> you can, you can't almost, can't almost tell them apart but there are two um, anemones right there but they're looking awesome mushrooms of course uh, looking awesome so tanks looking great all right so as you can see I have this system set up in my laundry room um, I basically have my cold water tap split one going to the wash machine and one going into here so first stage is just a sediment filter as you can see it's kind of getting brown and probably almost time to get that replaced um, second stage goes through a carbon block filter and then it goes to the uh, reverse osmosis membrane and then 
DI resin. One key part of this is an auto shut off valve, which is this. Basically what this does is once you shut off your uh, outlet or output uh, from this system, instead of it, because what happens with the, the RO filters, it basically rejects um, most of the water um, and you're basically forcing water through the membrane um, to filter out the water. Um, and most of it goes out to the drain. So I have this um, connected to our, our laundry drain there. So if you don't have an auto automatic shut off, the water will just, you know, the input water is just gonna get fed and rejected out even when you shut off your, uh, your output of your uh, membrane. So super important to have this um, closed. That way you don't have to um, shut off your source every time you shut off uh, the output. This valve automatically shuts the, in the input off. Uh, I'm not gonna go through exactly how this uh, system works right now. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and maybe I can explain it more. But basically, it keeps you from um, basically keep on feeding water into this and draining it out and wasting water. So that's really the, the filter system. It's a four stage. Uh, fairly simple. I know um, BRS and others, they do recommend five stage and there's even six, seven, eight stage filters. But to me, uh, four is enough. So I basically have it hung up on that wall. Um, and also, just want to let you guys know, I do have the output of the carbon block going into my refrigerator. So ice maker and and water tap from my refrigerator. That way it's got it's filtered water going into there. Not reverse osmosis, but filtered water. All right, so the output of this system goes into this bin. So as you can see, I got a full bin. Um, one key part of the system also, and I found super, super important, is having a float valve that shuts off when this gets full because I almost never remember to shut off this output valve before this is full. Never. I haven't ever done it in forever. So, and I have flooded this, I think at least one time when I didn't have that. So that was a huge upgrade I did probably 19 years ago. Anyway. So we got fresh uh, water here and I don't have a continuous uh, TDS meter. So TDS measurements, super important for your fresh water. That's total dissolved solids. So I just have this little handheld TDS meter. Um, you do have to calibrate it once in a while. You want this to be at most one or two PPM. Generally you want it to be zero. So see where we are today. So as you can see, it's zero TDS. So that means our filter system, especially the, it's really the uh, DI resin that takes the uh, last few PPM out of the system or out of the water. But anyway, we're ready. We got fresh, fresh water in there. Um, so that's what I use for top off. Uh, I just scoop it out of there and put it in the top off tank or bucket. Um, there's my stack of towels handy because things get wet. So let me show you how I mix up uh, salt water. So I have a, this five gallon bucket and I had measured five gallons is right about this line. Um, sort of rough estimate. I've done it now enough times that I know that if I fill up the water up to this line, I add five scoops of salt. It gets me right, pretty much right at the 35 PPT that I'm looking for. So let's go do that. So nothing high tech about this. It's just scoop and fill. <laughs> All 
All right, quick tip guys. Um, you never want to add water into salt. You always want to have your bucket filled with water first and then you add the salt um, because if you start mixing salt at super high concentration, it will precipitate. At least that's what I've heard. Uh, so I never do it. So I use uh, Fritz's Blue Box. That's what my LFS carries, so that's what I buy. Obviously Fritz Blue Box comes in a box, not in a bucket, so it's just an old salt bucket that I got. So basically I just transfer all that salt in the box into here. So it's just for, for ease of use. <laughs> Basically, what I do is I use this. Um, my spare heater, thermocouple, and a little, I don't know what this is, little power head. Basically, I uh, just need to plug all that in and let it mix for, I don't know, several hours at least. Um, but. Uh, usually I try to do it the day before that way it's mixing overnight so there you go everything's plugged in water is mixing basically the hardest part of uh, this whole process is dealing with all these power cables um, there's the uh, heater controller I just set it to the same temperature as the tank basically circulating in there and mixing and we wait. So another quick tip guys, um, make sure you have lids. So cover up your bucket while it's mixing, cover up your fresh water, um, cover up your salt. You know, you don't want to accidentally drop anything in these containers. All right, and there you have it guys. I just wanted to show you guys my RODI water system. It's a simple four stage unit can really keep it simple but I do understand that it can be pricey kit like this can run you $150 give or take um, but in my opinion it's a necessity in this hobby but anyway if you have any questions um, just leave them down below in the comments and I'll, I'll try to answer them and let me know what you think uh, whether or not you do use an RODI system if you think you need it do you just use tap water? Be interested to know. I just want to show you guys my little setup. So anyway, thanks for watching. Till next time, stay salty.